So we started our trials with Ceristag about um, in March this year. We were meant to start last year, um, but due to the season, we put it off. Aileron station is 4,116 kilometres squared, and at the moment we're using about 75% of our country. Some of the things that make our life easier, and maybe that's not the best choice of words, but are things like staff retention, which is knowledge, solar, satellite waters, poly. We love the light plane to get about. Um, but some things that have changed our operation recently have been farm bot, the timers on our solar bores, which we designed ourselves, Ceres tag and SIBO labs. Satellite imagery. So we've applied about 80 Ceres tags and we have another 200 plus waiting for application. We're taking our time with these. We're just exploring what works for us and how we apply the tags, um, considering whether we should put them all in heifers or um, a percentage of bulls, whether we use Judas leads like ex potty calves or steady and quiet cows, how many work best for us in a mob and, um, as again, which animals in the mob. And with that, um, we are one of several local properties participating in the Ceres tag, uh, sorry, satellite imagery with SIBO Labs project with Yoni Walsh. Um, how do I get this video to work? In a minute. Uh, oh. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Go ahead. This is just showing. Can we have no volume, please? Um, we really need no volume because the next video I show you, my husband is eating a bag of chips. <laughs> so, <laughs> great, thank you. Where is he? Uh, he's not in that one. <laughs> yeah, so that's um, Craig putting a Ceres tag on in the race. Um, do you want to just show it again just so we're all focused? Yeah, so it's pretty easy. And he just checks that the tag's in firmly. And that's the day's work done. All right. So this is our dashboard. We use Mappapedia as a platform. Um, there's only 58 tags there that we can see visually. Um, so this is pretty much, oh wait, I'll use this. Is this working? Yeah. Okay, so this is our boundary around here. It's fairly well within the square. And as you can see, we're just using the Ceres tags in that area and up here. And um, that's mostly in that, actually that's not true because we're using them down here as well, which are not showing up there. They must have been before. Um, but that's mostly because that's our heifer country. And this is our um, 8K grazing radius with the SIBO Labs map. So all of those blue spots there are water points and then we've just named some of the regions. So all of those blue spots down there, including down there are the watering points. Okay, so we're going to talk about two case studies and we're going to focus on total standing dry matter and food on offer using um, the satellite imagery and the animal uh, behavior with Ceres tag um, at Pride Moors and Legacy West. So the Pride Moors story is we started putting heifers into Pride Moors, which is a spelled paddock in May 2021, which is just the start of our first round, of course. We only had four heifers um, tagged, but we believed at that, at that time with those number of cattle that gave us a good indication of what 60 to 70 percent of the mob were doing based on observations by plane and on ground. So we continued taking um, loads, small loads, of course, um, of cattle heifers to that paddock and the last load came in on the 5th of August. By September, um, we had 360 head, 300 kilo average heifers, and they were starting to noticeably slip. So Craig said, we need to move them on to their next move. Um, in September, we had two rain events, um, and we walked the heifers out in late October. So we had a bit of other stuff going on with the farm, et cetera, and we're just adjusting our timing for the operation. Um, it's a learning curve for us at the moment. But on reflection, when we moved the heifers out, we, we thought we should have moved them a fair bit earlier. So we asked ourselves, can Ceres Tag, together with SIBO Labs, help us understand when um, we should have done that? And what does the satellite imagery tell us? So first of all, we're going to have a look at um, Ceres Tag, this is where Craig's eating the chips, um, in Pride Moor. So would you mind starting that, please? And there we go. So just... Um, 
the, so the dates are up here, you can see, and I've just slowed it down so you can see the change in behaviour. So about here, I think they really just start to work on that three and a half kilometre radius. We're just looking at this paddock at the moment. So you can see early on they went out and explored, had a look around, and now they just really focus here. And then we can start seeing some changes in behaviour in about a month's time. So we just focus on this area. Okay, so they're starting to step out a little bit now. Broadening, broadening it. So this is about three and a half kilometres from the watering. Did we have rain then? Or uh, no, September. Don't worry about that bit yet. <laughs> All right, so we'll start seeing some changes in behaviour about now. And this is when we thought we should have probably moved them, looking back historically, of course. And so October, they're really working right up. This is about 16 k's up here, oh, 15 k's up here. And then those lines are when um, we walk them. And because uh, Sarah's tag um, uh, does point to point, so um, updates, when, when you do a walk, sometimes it looks like a straight line, but it's not really. I'm actually a bit confused about these, um, anyway. Yep, so this is the watering point just over here. Yeah, right. yep. so they weren't sort of going out for a couple of days and then going to No, no. And so um, it, even though it looks like um, it's quite a wide space, like from this side to this side, it's we worked out in the satellite, it's only about three and a half k's. Yep, so the majority of the movement early on was just in this space here. All right, next slide, please. Ah, uh, oh, what's going on here? Oh, next one, yep. Next one, we're just looking at this one again, yep. Okay, so based on the Ceres tags patterns, uh, we made a call to focus on a three kilometre buffer from our water point, and we used the SIBO Labs imagery from mid-July to the start of November to show the total standing dry matter. So, um, Lewis, you um, uh, talked about purple being heavy before? It was the other way around. Yeah. yeah, okay, I thought so. All right, so these um, purple bits are um, lots and lots of vegetation and of course the red bits are not so much vegetation. So you can see when the, in mid-July there was quite a bit of good vegetation around these, um, the radius and then it dropped away towards the end of October. Um, and the next slide is, oops, yep. So we graphed that and we can see that the average um, total standing dry matter inside the buffer area never fell below 300 kilos. Um, and um, that threshold apparently is when cattle really start to walk out. Um, but there were areas that would have been below the threshold, which were the orange and red bits. Overall, the average stayed above it. Um, the feed definitely declined between mid-July and the end of August, and this decline accelerated after early August, um, early August, as shown by the slope in the line. And that is not August, that is September. That's what I thought. So there's an error there. That's September. The graph um, appears to show a response to those September rain events, so that's when it came back up again. And then the, um, um, so the feed stabilised a little bit and then it declined again. So um, it is correct. Um, we'll go on to the next one. So can you just, are you able to press play on that one? Yeah. And can we just speed it up a little bit? To, oops. Oh, it's not. Okay, sorry. All right. Um, uh, but it does show in the video that um, the end of um, September was when they really started to get busy and work that paddock. So, yes, it did show us. Um, Sarah's tag behaviour could predict the, that we should have moved the cattle at that point or beforehand, um, but it was backed up by the um, CBO Lab starter. So, the next one. Legacy was a fresh paddock again in May. Um, we started loading it um, with a smaller line of heifers um, and the last 20 head with Ceres tags went in October. So then we had 160 head of 150 to 200 kilo heifers. They're a long way from the paddock, uh, sorry, from the homestead, um, but the tags allowed us to ensure that they stayed in the paddock. And our goal is that the 20 head will socialise with the existing 140. So when we shift them into the fresh paddock next month, we get a good indication of the utilisation of the paddock um, and that will carry over onto their next two moves. So um, visually, it looks like it has sufficient feed but the Ceres tag behaviour made us wonder if we had misjudged the situation. Uh, is there a video there? 
Yeah. So you can see the straight lines of them being trucked to the paddock, but then they started to worry us because they were using the whole paddock. So I have to say that this is all within an eight kilometre radius, so um, it would make sense that they would use it, but it really worried us that they were walking um, out so quickly, and we thought maybe we've misjudged the situation, maybe they don't have enough sufficient feed. Uh, food on offer. Yeah, so we used um, one of the tools by um, uh, Cebo Labs, and you probably can't see that very well, um, and I'll show you some of the tools in a second, um, but it showed us if we put our um, data in appropriately that we had um, surplus feed, there was enough feed, if we left them in there until the 1st of the 1st, 2022, which was 59 days from when that video was, or that movie was taken, um, we actually would have surplus feed at the end of it. So we felt confident that we would have enough feed. Um, and then when we had a look at the satellite imagery, we can see that that's backed up. So, yep, yeah, there's a fair bit of red around here, which is why they would be moving away, but we can see that there's um, this much um, dry matter. Um, and um, that most of the feed is not in too bad a condition. And it's mostly out here, of course, which is why they're walking to enjoy it. So some of the tools that we use in the SIBO Labs project are these little babies that have been designed, of course, by um, Dione Walsh and um, her colleagues. And we just put our... Oops, we just put our paddock names in there and then we get the data back from SIBO Labs telling us how much um, area we've got um, and then of course it calculates um, the area that we want to know about and this is how much food's on offer and, um, and how we're going, no it's not that one, it's the next one I think is how we're going for utilisation. This is talking about, yep, so we just keep entering the data all the way through. I should have taken a snapshot of all of the spreadsheets. But this is working out our AEs for each paddock, and this is yet yeah, coming now down to our forage end. So all we're doing is completing the green lines, putting the data in the green lines, and all of the rest of them are pre-populated. Um, pre so these are our tabs down the bottom. So baseline paddock data, working out your AE, forage budget by paddock. And this is the next one, which um, I was talking to Dione about this yesterday, actually. We've got some... Um, we've got some concerns about this one. We just we need to truth test it, but the only way we can truth test it, of course, is to go through the pro project. Um, but it looks the early days look like there could be some work to do adjusting this just to get it back down to truth test. So, in addition to what we've learnt already, this is where we're heading. Um, we're looking for visibility of our bulls during control mating. Um, we're not control mating yet, but that's where we want to be. Um, we want to understand better the utilisation of our paddocks for decisions around fencing and water infrastructure. Um, oh gosh, I wanted to show you too in that first video that um, we saw a heifer has moved over to Pine Hill so we're waiting for a phone call from them. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just a joke, they know that we know. Um, <laughs> uh, security of um, paddocks, so we need to know um, we would like to know when cattle are getting out, so we use the geofencing. Um, so we actually received an alert when that um, heifer moved out of our um, Nolans over to Pine Hill. Um, and especially when we go to the trouble of segregating our groups, we, we really want to be aware of what's going on. Um, Craig's pretty keen to use it on speeding up trapping, so knowing what comes in and out, and so knowing when we need to stop trapping. So at the moment we trap out of a paddock into a big holding paddock, um, but if we don't need to leave them in there for you know five days and we can reduce it to three, well then let's do it. Um, obviously we want to get much better at our feed budgeting. We, um, I really believe in, C in, in the SIBO labs for this purpose, um, and developing our sales program around our food on offer. Uh, and yeah, I've already had a bit of a chat with um, the roads about um, control burning, um, and I pulled this this one out, um, and they responded fairly quickly because I was able to give them a, give them an example of how much feed we would lose if we had a bushfire in that district. So that was pretty helpful. But of course, um, the more you think about it, the more you learn. And I don't know if you're going to buy a you know, $80 million property, would you actually purchase it without knowing what your foo is? There's a question. And if you have questions, ask the quiet bloke at the back of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you.